Uh, when, when I was a student and first took a course in quantum mechanics, I felt I couldn't understand it. And uh, I, I blamed it on myself. And I thought, oh, I probably need to learn more mathematics. So I went and learned more mathematics, which was a good thing, but uh, it didn't actually solve the problem. I still didn't understand quantum mechanics. Then I thought, hmm, I probably need to know more about experimental physics. So I learned more about experimental physics, but still couldn't understand quantum mechanics. Then I thought, hmm, I need to learn more about philosophy. So I tried to read something about Niels Bohr and Werner Heisenberg's philosophy, but it didn't really help. And then at some point, I learned, I heard about theories that actually made sense out of quantum mechanics by changing quantum mechanics, replacing it a bit, while keeping the Schrödinger equation and many mathematical concepts of quantum mechanics, but presenting a different theory than what was in the textbooks. And that made sense. And that was what I wanted to do. That's why I went into research in foundations of quantum mechanics. The idea of, the, the theory of quantum mechanics that uh, I find most convincing, that's Bohmian mechanics. It's a theory that uh, takes particles literally and claims that an electron is really a point-shaped object that moves around in space. That theory I find most elegant and the simplest of all the proposals that I've heard that actually make sense. So, um, it is my subjective opinion that, this, that the final theory of quantum mechanics will still be uh, at least similar to Bohm's theory. I think it's not. Um, theories of quantum physics can be deterministic, like Bohmian mechanics, or stochastic, like collapse models. Um, and I haven't seen any, any other type of theories that, were, uh, that made sense out of quantum mechanics that were neither deterministic nor stochastic. And deterministic and stochastic theories, that's also what you have in classical physics. Well, in classical physics, you have mostly deterministic theories. But uh, essentially, the kind of randomness is of the same, comes from the same source, either ignorance of the precise conditions, that's how deterministic theories can give rise to randomness, or the theory could be stochastic, which means there's intrinsic randomness. Some things happen uh, in an unforeseeable way just because there is no cause that determines what will happen. That's my view. Bell's argument shows that our world is non-local. That means that uh, um, some events can influence some other events at great distances at a speed faster than the speed of light. So that is what I take Bell's argument to show. Um, this makes it hard to come up with a good um, quantum theory that, um, that obeys the principles of relativity theory. Hard, but not impossible. Uh, so there are some options on the table, and it seems that, um, that Bell's argument leaves us the following options. Either the theory is fundamentally stochastic, that is, uh, the, the very fundamental events are already um, random, with certain um, probabilities that, um, that violate Bell's inequalities, or there is a simultaneity at a distance, so that it would be something that may go against our understanding of the spirit of relativity, so we may have to change our view of what exactly it is that relativity theory tells us. Just like um, we physicists apply math 
in our everyday physics work, we also apply philosophy in our everyday physics work. Uh, this philosophy, most of us didn't learn in philosophy classes. We learned it in physics classes. And this philosophy that, uh, that contains views about questions such as uh, what are the things, the kind of phenomena that need an explanation? What would count as a satisfactory explanation of a phenomenon? Um, what, what kinds of theories are satisfactory? Or what kinds of theories would count as meaningful? And things like that. Um, in addition, there's another influence of philosophy in quantum physics that came particularly through Niels Bohr and Werner Heisenberg. Uh, that's the idea of complementarity. But I think that is actually not a good philosophy. I think it has done more harm than good. One is a very practical problem, namely that the existing solutions to the troubles of quantum mechanics, such as Bohmian mechanics or uh, collapse theories, such as the GRW theory, are not widely appreciated. So this is kind of less of a scientific problem, it's more a sociological problem, but of very big importance actually for the science. Um, among the scientific problems, I would say the, the most pressing problem is to, um, to obtain a clean um, theory for quantum field theory, a, a clean theory explaining quantum field theory. We have clean theories for quantum mechanics, uh, and quantum field theory has, well, has all the same problems as quantum mechanics, but further problems in addition. So these are the things that that we should try to solve, I think. Um, and among these additional problems, I think the biggest stumbling block is the mysterious uh, probability distribution of photon positions. This is like a, a, very, um, a very unclear situation. We don't really know what the situation is, and some of the indications that we have are kind of contradicting each other.